because your compadres are gone. And some of you are going to have to actually answer some questions. Tonight we are finishing up Titus. And I know that it is with great trepidation that you think if it took us this long to get through Titus, how long will it take her to get through Psalms 119? <laughs> We've been in Titus for weeks and weeks and weeks. I want, if you're comfortable, I want you to say what one thing just jumped off at you in, in Titus. Or did you bring anything out with you over the study? I missed it all. So. <laughs> Good answer, Jella. <laughs> right, that was just my first time. Well, I was here the first part. Okay. First lesson, but that's that. But, that the was main good. thing is that we ought to live what we say. I mean, we should be an example. Exactly. That's very good. Anybody else? You know, one of the things that struck me about Titus is that when you go back and you re review historically, the folks that it was written to and what was going on, there is such parallels for what we have today. And one of the things that it really it struck me about Titus is the instructions to uh, churches. And if you've got your Bible open to Titus, if you look at the second chapter, uh, the first verse, and I think this is a clarion call to us as church members today. Uh, what our obligation is, Titus 2.1, but as for you, these are the members of the church at Titus, and, and he's directing it to um, his, his helper Titus, he's saying, Titus, but to you speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. That's his instruction to Titus. Speak the things that are clearly the things for sound doctrine. Now, why do you think that's important? Because there are so many wrong doctrines floating around out there. That's true. False teachers, you know, we, we've been studying that as we've marched through uh, these last couple of Bible studies. Um, I want you to look at chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. And this is going to be kind of a springboard of, of how we're going to close out Titus and then as a um, prequel to our study of the Psalms. If you look at Titus 2, 11 through 14, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Who's he talking about? Jesus. Jesus. Instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. A lot of words. But he's basically talking about four things. Christ brought salvation to us. And he's really teaching us just to say no to some things. We're to say no to ungodliness. What's that? Sin. Sin. Anything that's contrary to the nature of God. About the time John gets ready to sit down, I move. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll try to stay put. We're to say no to worldly passions. What are those? Lust. Things that appear to the eye. Things that you know, sin just covers a lot of things. Um, but that's worldly passions. It's what makes us feel good in the flesh. And he tells us we are to live self-controlled, upright lives in this present age. Now that sounds really good. How do we do that? First thing is to know what God says. Exactly. Thank you, Miss Barbara. That's true. <clears throat> 
But he says that we're to do this while we wait for the blessed hope, Jesus Christ. We know he's coming back to get us. And so in the interim between now and his return, we as believers have some obligations. And one of them is to develop our personal relationship with the Lord. You know, we need to develop a relationship with God that is growing and vibrant. Now, those of y'all who are parents can identify with this. We know when you, you have a kid and you first bring them home from the hospital, you love them. And you think, oh, I'll never love them any more than what I do now. But what happens? You love them more. As their little personalities grow and develop and, and they become uniquely who they are, you love them more. And how many of them when you how many of you when you had your children think, I couldn't love offspring anymore, and then boom, here comes your grandchildren. What happened? You love them more. You love them more. <laughs> You know, my, my parents were grandparents young, and so now they are great-grandparents, like some of y'all. And my dad said, boy, I just thought being a grandparent was fun. It is nothing compared to being a great-grandparent. So in our human relationships that we have with the people that we love, we have an expectancy for that love and that relationship to grow and deepen and develop into something more than what it was the first day you brought the baby home from the hospital. So why would we view our relationship with God and developing a relationship with Jesus Christ any differently? There's a remarkable book. I've mentioned it several times. It's called The Shack. It's written by William Young. I have read it literally dozens of times and twice a year at a minimum. I listen to it on my commute back and forth to home. And if you've not read it, uh, you know it's not everybody's cup of tea. But it's a fictional account of a man who has an extraordinarily devastating loss and it damages his relationship that he has with God. He's very angry over it. And the storyline is the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost invite him for a weekend where they take form of people in order for him to heal. It's a remarkable story. It's got a lot of good theology in it. Um, and every time I read it or listen to it, something else comes out for me. And so I, it's always led me to believe, I want you to take a minute and in your mind, watch your favorite place that you like to go to. It can be home, it can be off. But I want you to think about that. Where's the place you're most comfortable, you're most happy, that... You know, the, the total environment of this place just really makes you glad. Mine is where I live, my home. I have an outdoor kitchen. It's got a screened-in porch. And I love to sit out there early in the morning, watch the sun come up and listen to the birds and take a cup of coffee out there. And that's my perfect place. You got dogs and chickens? <laughs> yeah. Where's yours? You don't have to say it, but I just want you to get that place in your mind's eye. Now, what would, what would you be willing to give up or pay to have Jesus meet you there and drink a cup of coffee? Just spend the day with you. Just whatever you want to talk about or do, what would you be willing to give up for that? And you wouldn't even have to talk all the time, just to be with him, to share that with him, or, you know, to ask him all those questions. What would that be worth to you? That's what Bible study can be. I mean, it, we don't have the opportunity, like in the, the book The Shack, to just sit down and spend time, face time, real time, with the Trinity. But that's what the scriptures are. This is God. Now, 
We know different men wrote various parts of this Bible, the books, but who inspired them? God did. God did. And, you know, personally, I believe the scripture is inspired by God. Every word. The same as that if he would have taken their hand and wrote it down. Now, does it answer all of the questions? Does it give us all the information that there is that God has? No. Because he, he knows everything. But particularly in the New Testament, the red letter words, the words that Jesus said, do you think those are all the words that Jesus spoke? No. But God in his wisdom said, this is what you need. <coughs> this is enough. Now, just off the top of your head, what, and you don't have to cite chapter and verse, but what do you recall that the scriptures tell us about the scripture? All scripture is given by inspiration. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's exactly what I was All, all scripture is given by inspiration. God and it's profitable for doctrine, for instruction in righteousness and righteousness. Something else. <laughs> Root, yeah. Yeah. Don't no Now why you produced a preacher? <laughs> <laughs> I think I couldn't do it all. <laughs> what what is? What comes to your mind about what does the scripture say about the scriptures? You know it's inspired. Okay, that's everybody's first. <laughs> it's, it's God's word. It's God's word. Anything else? Tells us about Christ. Tells us about Christ. Yeah. You know, what are some other things that the scriptures tell us? That I'm not going to ask you to quote scripture, but what comes to mind? He's with us. He's, He's with us there. Okay. You want to say something, Miss Barber? Well, I was just thinking about Philip. He asked Jesus to sh if he could see God. You know, if he could just see God. And Jesus said, I am God. Have you been so long with me, Philip, and you still don't know who I am? Just to know Jesus is to know God. You know, uh, I've said this before. Uh, one of my Dutch uncles who I adopted uh, is a preacher. He's retired now. But I was eating supper one night with he and his wife, and he said, how we perceive God will determine how we worship God. How we perceive God will determine how we will worship God. Now, what is your perception of God based on? My relationship with His Son. Okay. And where do you get the conceptual framework for that? Well, Jesus told Philip that day when you seen me, you yeah, seen me. Yeah, where'd you get that? Out of the Bible. There you oh. go. <laughs> <laughs> if, this, if we really want to know the heart of God and the mind of Christ and the workings of the Holy Spirit, this book is where we start and this is where we get the information now for people who have spent years and years and years in church sometimes they're a little reluctant to say I don't know how to study the Bible because you think well yikes you know I've I've taught for 40 years, but I really don't know how to study the Bible. Now, I know how to read a book about the Bible, and I know how to prepare the lesson from the teacher's guide, but I'm really not sure that I know how to really study the Word of God. And for years, I was that person. I mean, I've taught... Um, Sunday school for years and years when I lived in Rurock 
And then it occurred to me one day, how does, how, how does one go about really learning how to break down scripture? What's the process? And I thought, okay, I don't really want to learn how to read Greek or Hebrew. So what can I do? And uh, when I lived in Rock, I became part of the, I had the opportunity to participate in a group called Bible Study Fellowship, which is a nine-month Bible study. It's been around forever and ever. But the only book you study is the Bible. And that really whetted my appetite for more. And then I found uh, these uh, precept study guides. And one of the things that I, I, I just feel compelled, and I, I truly believe this is the Holy Spirit, is that if people want to, and if I can be used by the Holy Spirit, is to help people learn a new method. Hear me out. This, it's, it's the same Bible. You know, it's this Bible. But what Kay Arthur does in her study is she just helps you learn simple ways to identify things. So this is the book that we're going to be using. It's Praising God Through Prayer and Worship. And this is a study on the Psalms. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if y'all don't mind sharing one for now, uh, uh, I've got a, I'm going to Little Rock and I can probably get some. I'll be back with the kids. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So everybody's got one of these. Let me tell you a little bit about Kay Arthur. She's one of my favorite people. Um, she came to know the Lord, I want to say in her late 20s or early 30s. She had been divorced. Um, she had custody of her two boys. And she is, she's very honest, she's a very godly woman, but she said she got involved in a lot of sin. And she met a man who became her husband. And he really called her out on... Um, her relationship with God, it made her mad. And her testimony is, she came to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, got down on her knees, accepted Him as her Lord and Savior. And then they went on the mission field. And I want to say they were in Mexico. And she started teaching Bible studies for kids. Now by profession, she is a nurse. So she's used to dealing with... Um, defined pieces of information like you have in healthcare. And that's really, I think, the approach she used here. So, get your book. We're just going to look at it. Just for a little bit. Another bar like what we're doing there. There you go. If you will look at page five, how to get started. Now, this next week, what I want you to do is just to read how to get started. And it's not that many pages. It goes through page 10. And what she does is really breaks down her process, what she does. And that's what I want you to read that. And I want you to read the introduction to the Psalms. And that's just two and a half pages. Now, when you get to this page, the first lesson is actually page 17. Now, I've, I've done several of these, and over the years, I started out doing exactly what she said on how to get started. And then over the years, I've just sort of tailored it down to meet my needs. One of the things you're going to find when you read how to get started, and then you read the introduction to the Psalms. And all I want you to do between now and next week is just read week one. Now, if you feel like doing her instructions, do that. But all I really want you to do is just read it and get comfortable with it. Now, th this is my book. 
and I've gotten started on it. One of the things that I do, and as you read this, you're going to see, she gives you specific instructions. So I always read one week at a time, and I take a yellow highlighter, and I highlight what the specific things she tells me to do. Like the first one here is she's going to say, and this is a good trick, and I pass it on to you, get a three by five index card, and she's going to give you key words. And she's going to have instructions on how you will mark those key words. If you look at page 18, the very top, the second sentence, you see the word Lord, L-O-R-D. And she's going to say to you, to help you get started, we suggest you mark Lord with a purple triangle shaded yellow. So what she does is she gives you very simple symbols to use. Now, this study works better if you have a Bible you're willing to mark up. Now, you don't have to do that at all. So don't, don't get all paranoid. And you don't have to use any particular version of the Bible. This book, um, I mean, she has, it, this is called Inductive Bible Study, where you build. And um, it's the New American Standard Bible. But an NIV, a New King James, a King James, whatever you want to use will work. Now, you can go to a Christian bookstore and probably get a paperback for, uh, copy of just the Psalms if you don't want to mark your Bible. And that would work. Um, she has a color-coded process. And it works really well because what you will see is... Um, This is a study that years ago here in our Sunday school class we did in Revelation. And so you can see where if you use her color code system, after you do the, lack of a better term, homework, you can go back and, and you'll see, oh, well, Lord comes up here and here and here, and it helps you figure out the things and what they're talking about. Now, the, what I like about this Bible it's a single column Bible, where most of your Bibles, you know, the page is split in half and there's a column of text and then a column of text. Unless you print really, really small, it's hard to write on. If you notice, this is single column and wide margins. And I like it in study Bible because I can make notes and I can, can write and it helps me. So you can see you're gonna mark up a text did you check and find out how much that was going to cost? They're about, uh, at Lifeway, they're anywhere in, in the mid to late 40s. Oh, but this is a hardcover. Um, somebody had checked that could maybe order them wholesale. That's what she's not here tonight. Yeah, but we'll, we can get that. But I really encourage you, it doesn't have to be this particular Bible. But there are several single column, wide margin Bibles available. Or you might be able to find just a printed uh, paperback version of the Psalms. But if, if you don't mind marking up a Bible, you will be surprised how it will help you break down the verses. So one of the things that I do, and, it, and if you're inclined to do this, I go through for the whole week and I mark in yellow highlighter all of her instructions that she has given me. I just sit down and read it. It also helps me understand that week what we're going. You know, my older sister, we all love to read. And one of the things she does anytime she reads a book She'll go read the last chapter first. And then she says she doesn't have to deal with the anticipation. <laughs> but one of the things you'll see if you look on page 24 is what's called Thought of the Week. And this is where uh, Kay Arthur goes back and kind of what she captures what we <coughs> talked about and things and those sort of things. So I like to read that first. It helps me get things squared up in, in my mind what we're looking at. Now, some simple tools. 
I got these at Lifeway. These are uh, Bible study kit. These are markers, fine point, that are designed not to bleed through paper. If you've got a Bible that the thinner the paper, it, a ballpoint ink will sometimes bleed That's through. That's why I ain't marking my Bible. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, it'll do that. So um, these are designed to, to not bleed so much. The other good thing about these, this Bible is it's thicker paper. So it won't bleed. But you can you can get these to underline certain keywords in the colors. Or just go to That's France. What I've got I've got Crayola pencils. Yeah. <laughs> or just get these. Uh, <clears throat> I can't draw. So I was always kind of frustrated. Uh, Rachel Holtop, you know, who's a fabulous artist. She's been in a lot of these Bible studies. And, oh, she could just draw things out. And I, my stuff would just look like blobs. So, you know, colored pencils will help. Because she's going to tell you certain words. You're going to identify them with a symbol or with a color. For example, you'll see repeated in all her studies any reference to an actual geographic place. She wants you to underline in green. Grass, earth. And that sort of thing. Uh, references to the Trinity, purple, royalty, sin, black, or uh, salvation. I mean, you'll see these trends and you'll just be surprised. It's a little burdensome at first. I am the first to admit that. I spent all the time picking up pencils, putting them down, trying to do things. But once you get the hang of it, it will really open up your mind to the process of studying the scripture. Now, you may so, be sitting there. So what are we going to need? Can I write in this book? It's your book. Okay, so you want us to get the colored pencils. If you want to. Well, I, I would suggest you get colored pencils. Note three by five note cards. Mm -hmm. I would get a highlighter. I, I'm telling you, this is real. It has helped me to be able to get her instructions so that I don't miss them. And you're going to need just a regular, old-fashioned notebook. Because one of the things you'll see, just looking at week one, if you'll turn to page 23. Day seven, see that questions or discussion um, or individual study? Answer these questions. They will really help you understand what all is going on. And I tell you another neat thing about this study, and again it is very burdensome because you you think, oh, what colored pencil? I've got to do this in the notebook. Where's the note card? I could slap Jeannie for <laughs> talking us into this. If you'll look at page uh, 293 in the very back, you're going to see this form. Psalms at a glance. 192. I'm sorry. I have moments where I have dyslexia. <laughs> Psalms at a glance, page 193. See that? Mm -hmm. Segment, divisions, chapter themes, author, date. You see these notes? Geographic location, purpose, keywords. This is a good way to capture what you've studied. And the thing about it is when you finish this book, you have made your very own outline of the whole book of Psalms. Now, I don't know how you learn. How I learn, I, I have to touch words. I have to write words. I have to take pen in hand. And I've done this all my uh, academic career. You know, I, I have to do that. You may not learn that way, so however you learn, please do. But if you're not sure what your learning style is, this is a great one to try out. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, I have not been in school for 50 or 60 years. Or you may say, you know, I don't, 
I don't like to read, I have comprehension issues, whatever, whatever, whatever. All Bible stuff should start first with prayer. Because the Holy Spirit that lives in a believer, if you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand the words in the Scripture, become alive. And you might not be comfortable doing the whole chapter for the week, the whole first week. But not being comfortable is no excuse for not doing something. And if you can only do five verses, God will honor those five verses. You might be able to do the whole thing. You may work ahead. But one of the things you're going to find about this scripture is that, and we saw it in Titus, it's the repetition you know, one of the interesting things going through several of these studies with a teacher is that you get the benefit of the teacher saying, you know, she's having you go back and it just reinforces it and reinforces it and reinforces it. This is, see right there? It's study series. It's not reading series. It's Bible study. It's not Bible reading. And let, let me ask you this. Personally, I've had Miss Jody's homemade biscuits with her homemade chocolate gravy, and that's what we will have in heaven. If you haven't had it, you just <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. Do you measure when you make biscuits now? Why? Years of experience. There you go. You know, when I, I, I don't do well baking. I love to cook, but if I bake, I have to be very precise because if I start eyeballing it, oh, it's just terrible. But for someone like Miss Jody that's made biscuits for years and years and years, you don't need a recipe. You just need the stuff in a bowl and some time. That's Bible study. Once you get used to however you're going to learn, whatever your method's going to be, it'll get quicker. It'll get faster. You might have to give us two weeks on chapter. Well, and that's why that's why we're starting out that's slow. My concern. I have I have Mine is a Sunday school I just have lesson to prepare to go over and I don't know how much over. time I'm going to have. Well, I, I am firmly convinced that when you first start out, it may take a lot longer. But as we start going through this book, it's going to get better. And it's not about being fast. It's about being thorough. This is a great tool that you can set down with the Bible and have that long cup of coffee with the Lord. And you learn things and you will be challenged. And, and I just want to say this. If, if you start out with this and you think, oh man, I'm having trouble figuring this out in the Bible. You know, maybe I don't read well or, or whatever. I can tell you if this was mathematics, I wouldn't be here. I don't do well with math. So, you know, we all have things that we don't do as well as other people. Don't If you don't read well, don't let that intimidate you. Because I tell you, get a child's Bible. Not doing nothing is not an option. And I have to tell you, I, I'm proud of my mom. You know, she said, uh, do you think I can do this? Because you know, she had a stroke. And um, it, physically, you don't see it so much anymore. But the part of her brain that was damaged in the stroke is the part that deals with language. My mother was a voracious reader before her stroke. But she had to learn to read again. She had to learn to write her name again. So, I mean, she's had to really struggle. And she said, do you think I can do this study? And I said, oh, yes, ma'am. You might not do it all, but you can do some. So don't weenie out. That's a scriptural term. <laughs> <laughs> because this is something new or different. And, and here's what I want you to do. Like I said, it's really easy this next week. I want you to read um, how to get started 
in the introduction to the Psalms. And if you want to, start on week one. Jump in it. If you've got your marker, start there, whatever you want to do. And this is something that I'll offer, if this would help you out. Sunday evening before church, we can come up here and just sort of sit down and see how it's going and talk. Now, I know there are people that are in women's ensemble and people that go to different churches. For those folks, I will gladly have, we can either come up here one day during the week or I'll have y'all out to my house and, and we can go over it. Because I want us to be certain about the methods that we're going to use before we jump off in it. And it'll give you time to collect up some of your tools that you're going to use. Colored pencils, highlighters, notebook, or, uh, index cards. So I, I, I put that offer on the table. We can uh, meet Sunday afternoon before church. Um, and for those who can't come because of ladies' ensemble, we'll either come back up here or, you know, wouldn't be that many. Y'all are welcome out of my house. I'd even have sandwiches there. If we miss a week or two, how hard is it to get back? Well, it's not hard because, the, and that's a very good question. <coughs> this is to get you equipped to doing Bible study on a regular basis. If you're not here, let's just say the good Lord called you to go turkey hunting somewhere. <laughs> That's a ministry. <laughs> you can take this with you, and you can do your Bible study. You know, and again, it's we will all develop at our own pace. But one of the things that I have become c convicted of. I have no excuse for not studying the Word of God. And I have got to start memorizing Scripture. I've just weaned out about that forever. And you know, the Lord has said, you need to memorize. And I've put him off. So that, that's my challenge, is to memorize Scripture. And it may be you've never really had a systematic, organized approach for really studying the Word of God. Kay Arthur, um, she has a facility in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and, and my goal is to go there one day and study. I mean, it's, it's a big deal. Um, this is international. They have people trained in this teaching Bible study in the Middle East. They're doing it covertly because they can be killed all over the world. Precepts, it's a worldwide ministry and it will radically change your relationship with God because how you perceive God will determine how you worship Him. And how we get to know Him and His character is, is what we need to do. Because in Titus, we are to speak these things that are appropriate for sound doctrine. We're going to be um, a lighthouse for the lost in this community. And it's not enough we just get them in this building. We need to be able to equip them with the Word of God. We need to offer them more than just fire insurance. Oh, well, you're safe. That's great. You won't go to hell. Bye. <laughs> yeah, our job is done. I'm getting a cramp in my foot. <laughs> um, so, I, so I'm not getting slain in the spirit. <laughs> so we need to learn the scripture so we can teach the scripture. And we need to be able to learn. Not what somebody said about the word of God, but we need to be able to go to chapter and verse. And I'll give you an example. Today at work, I walked into the break room and there were two people there. One was working the vending machines and one was a security officer that was sent over to cover for, for that day. And they were talking about Revelation. And one of them said, well, I, I can go and show you on the page what seal that, that we're living under that's been broken. And 
So I slowed down what I was doing because I wanted to hear this. And they were talking to me. Well, we know it's soon. And I wanted to go. Even Jesus said, I don't know when. You know, the Father's going to say, hey, go get my children. But we hear people during the course of the day in the religious community say things that just are not in the Scripture. And we need to know what's there. And we need to accurately be able to use the Scripture to help other people. And if you have struggled through my Bible teaching, and I know that it sometimes is a struggle, you no longer have the get-out-of-jail-free card because the scriptures, we have studied them the last several months, it says you have this obligation. I have it. You have it. We can all sit around and act like we don't, but the bottom line is that we do. So... Any questions? Are we clear about assignments? What are you going to do? Just get all the stuff we need. Go over it. You got to read how to get started, introduction to the Psalms, and just read week one. If you want to work through it, that's great. But all I do is ask you to read it. I want you to think about getting colored pencils. Well, first of all, Bible you can mark in. If you're not willing to do that, don't buy the colored pencils. <laughs> you know. um, colored pencils, highlighter, and a notebook. Are you talking about like one in Little Rock? Yes. What, what side of town? It's on the west side. I tell you what, I will be going Friday. I've got a hearing in Little Rock. And if anybody would like one of these Bibles, or if... Um, do you know where the purple cow is in Little Rock? Mm -hmm. um, on Chanel. Okay. Is it up there by Hobby Lobby? Yes. Oh, no. Well, that's Mardell's. I buy a lot of stuff in there. They have this. I know where Mardell's yeah. is in North Little Rock. Well, Mardell's carries this. Okay. So if you're going to be up there, uh, if not, if you've got access to the internet. Um, yeah, let me see here. Is Glover still not in Pine Bluff? You know, I've gone. never no, no, they've, they've, been gone. Gone. they've been gone a long time. Okay. Out there on the internet, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>